What's going on everybody? Hope your weekend's going well. Chatty CRC here with you and wanted to talk about doing the dual camera mod here on the Acrobrat. You know, the Acrobrat is probably my second favorite thing to fly and my favorite would be one of my long range epics, but you know, you just when it's late at night and stuff, the last thing you want to do is buzz around you know a bunch of cornfields and stuff and risk the chance of losing your quad so you want to fly what you got and you have fun with and it doesn't mess with the neighbors and all that stuff but as everybody knows whether you're running the cat x or the run cam split mini you the fpv feed gets really bad at nighttime and even during the day it's hard to see things like scraggle the ghost branches and the different light transitions and stuff like that. So Ryan Thomas on the Acrobrat group actually did some really cool uh, 3D prints for the Acrobrat and one of them is the dual uh, camera uh, mount which you can see is front bumpers and kind of goes a little bit different here. And you could put uh, either camera on the top or the bottom you could run you know your flight cam on top bottom whatever you want to do I chose to run the flight cam on top so that way when I was flying I would get a little bit lower footage but eh, it really doesn't really matter what you would do I would probably would just go with whatever um, one pointer is that if you do put the cat X or the run cam on the bottom is that it's kind of hard to see in there but you can see the cable running through there um, it's kind of tricky to like get it to where you want it to go whether you're on the top or the bottom and I have mine zip tied and I have it pulled all the way over because the cable is on that bot it comes up from the bottom you know so it's kind of hard to fool around with so that's just one thing that uh, you need to look out for if uh, you do do this mod uh, the other thing is that you will need some longer uh, M2 screws the ones that you typically use or come with your cameras won't fit they're not long enough and if you look really close in there you can see that you know we don't use those metal space spacers anymore he's got the spacers uh, built into the actual print and that's really great but again that is another reason why you will need uh, the longer screws now some people are running like video splitters and everything like that I pretty much have the turtle set how I've flown enough to know that the image that I'm getting is pretty much what I'm going to get and whether if I want to make changes or whatever I'm probably not ever going to do that I can still see that's recording with the lights so I don't need to see the little recording icon so I'm just powering it off I'm powering that off of the 5 volt output on the Heli Nation Nano Talon and then I'm powering the flight cam off of the uh, Unify uh, HV Race, the 5 volt output on that and then I just have the video for the Cadex flight cam soldered up to the board so we can see everything and get our OSD. I did leave just the, the audio uh, wire there uh, clipped off unsoldered so that way if I don't know there were some firmware updates or something like that I could go ahead and quickly just uh, desolder one and solder the other and uh, use that as my flight cam temporarily while I tuned it in and everything so other than that um, it's it's a it's a great upgrade this brat weighs 212 grams now so it really didn't add a whole lot and you can see I've got, you know, big antenna, antenna tubes, uh, pretty much all the 3D printing stuff on there just because it looks good. And it really comes down to, you know, what kind of flying you do. I do just nice, gentle, smooth proximity with this. Very little like flips and rolls and stuff. I, I'm just not that kind of a flyer anyway. Uh, but if you're worried about weight, then, you know, you can always lose some of the 3D parts. There's actually like a light version um, on Thingiverse of these actual mounts right here and you can lose this front bumper 
and you know so you could even just run a dipole I mean everybody's running di a lot of people are running dipoles and they work just as good as this type of you know circular polarized antenna uh, I'm just running it because it's actually lighter than a lot of the other t antennas that I have and I get really good results with it so I made a big long installation video I'm just gonna like cut it up into parts here and show people what's going on if you want to take a look at that um, the very first clip there was from the maiden flight with this setup and you can see that with the camera in that type of position there when we were flying we were, we were getting props almost at mid screen so some people might not like that some people might not uh, if you want the props out of the view or as much as you can you're definitely gonna have to put the recording camera up on top so that's gonna do it I will show you the 3d print in the description and I'll just go ahead and roll like some of the install video and stuff now for everybody and if you got any questions let me know we'll see you guys later So when you're about to do something like this with this dual camera type of setup, there's a few things you got to think about. You got to think about, are you wanting to see video from both cameras at some point in time? And how are you going to power them? So on and so forth. Uh, for this example, I am choosing not to use any video at all from my Caddx Turtle. I'm pretty happy with the settings and everything. I will leave the video wire there. So, and the OSD cable hooked up, so that way if I ever want to do any changes to the settings or something like that, I could simply unsolder one wire and solder on the other. So, no big deal there. I am going to be powering the Caddx uh, from the flight controller, 5-volt uh, output, filtered 5-volt output on the, the Heli Nation Nano on the, to the Talon. So that pretty much wraps up that, not a big deal. Now, when it comes to the, the flight camera, I'm actually just gonna throw on one of my Caddx uh, micro turbos, which is a, a CMOS. It's gonna be a lot brighter, have a lot better wide dynamic range, and I should have a lot more, a lot better video clarity. Um, for some reason, these run cam splits and these Caddx turtles, the FPV feeds are always a little bit noisy no matter if you run capacitors or how clean or how good your board might be as far as filtering goes. Now, so the video from that will actually be going right into the flight controller because that's where I want my video from, is from that and the flight, from the flight camera. Now to power it, you know, these 20 by 20 boards don't have like five volt powers and HV stuff just everywhere, so we're using our VTX setup to power the VTX. So what I need to do is I'm gonna power that camera actually off of the Unify. Uh, what I have here is the Unify that was inside of the Acro Brat before. And the problem is, is like a lot of people, which I'm, I'm this is something for your new guys, you definitely wanna think about one thing don't be afraid to leave your wires long because whenever you need them, you're never going to have them. You're always going to have to extend or you're going to have to buy a new harness. Um, in my case here, I have cut the audio wire and I've ripped out the ground and the 5 volt output that would normally power a camera. Now recently on my builds, I have actually been powering my cameras from the VTX versus the flight controller because I've noticed that I have pretty much have been getting equal or better performance and that way I can leave these wires long and another reason is I've been using the first generation Hobbywing stack in a lot of my builds um, and it doesn't have a, a lot of 5 volt power on it so you kinda gotta come up with some creative methods so if you take a look at that and then we compare that to the new harness here you can see that I have this is the uh, harness that will plug into the Caddx flight cam this uh, yellow wire here will be soldered into the video input of the actual flight controller and then of course we have the video output we have the, the power coming 
from the Unify over here into uh, the camera and then we've got the actual power for the Unify that'll be soldered onto the Talon and then we have this white wire here is our smart audio wire so that's what's going to let us control our channels and everything like that by the way excuse the mess normally I can hide all this but my uh, working on some different camera things here and I can't seem to get my camera to zoom in so bear with me there so here we got the acro brat and if I kind of just kind of put this to the side here uh, what you can see is I still have here's the, the the power wires and everything for the the Caddx turtle so they're being powered off the flight controller like I said the video wire is there it's just cut so it's not going to be hooked up to anything and I'm leaving the OSD here because it's the version 1 so it doesn't have the solder pads or anything and then I've got my two uh, flight cameras mounted uh, right there so the mount is actually it works pretty good there's gonna be just enough space to kind of move everything kind of how um, you would want to for uh, camera angles I have elected to go with the HD cam on the bottom and the flight cam on the top uh, I run that uh, pretty much with our uh, multi-copter builder epic uh, setups and I kind of like that so it just kind of helps you I don't know it just like frames the shot better and then you know some people say if you put the flight cam on the bottom you can fly lower and everything like that and yeah that's probably true but you know I'm not going to be buzzing any bean fields or anything with the Acrobrat this is complete proximity light freestyle just fun flyer so I've got everything pretty much prepped and ready to go I've got the new uh, Unify uh, cable harness ready to go and I've got the Unify right here we're gonna stick it right back in here and of course we've got our pre our 3d printed mounts there where everything is going to go so now that I have the harness all made up uh, the very next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get things soldered up and plugged in and just make sure that everything works before we put this all back together so we already have the Caddx taken care of it's powered and it's ready to go now here is the wire for the flight camera and then I need to solder this stuff up to the actual Talon itself so I'm running my Talon flight controller so the first thing I'm gonna do is just go ahead and solder up this video connection here to the video input of the Talon and both of the pad and the wire is tinned up so just a little bit of heat and a tug and that is all on there now going to get all of this underneath here so things get messy real quick but it's nothing too crazy so we've got the unified pigtail right there the board is inverted we've got the XSR coming out of the back this is the first quad you're building congratulations you are building one of I wouldn't say the most difficult but micro builds are definitely challenging because you don't have as much space to work with that's for sure So I have my power wires and everything snuck underneath there and right here is the pigtail for the Unify. Here's my receiver. It's there. And while I'm here, I don't need to flip my board back over and do anything because all the soldering is done on the bottom and all of the cables are routed. So I'm actually going to put some of these nylon nuts back on here just so 
gonna hold this board down. <clears throat> Try not to run my turtle dragging stuff all over it. So I found with my particular setup and my filtering and everything that I can really snug this board down pretty good. I'm using the blue grommets on the bottom <clears throat> and I don't get any oscillations in the flight controller. No extra bad stuff going into the gyros. The motors are not hot at all and it's been very hot here in Ohio that's partly why I'm doing this today because it's like 90 degrees out and everything I do want to make sure that nothing is pinched or anything I'll plug my 4-in-1 back in that done there. All right, that is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and put the rest of these on real quick. Pretty excited to try out this dual camera mount. <clears throat> the nights are getting longer, so this is going to be coming in really handy here soon. All right, <clears throat> so there's the flight controller hooked back up. Now, I need to refer to my diagram here on the computer. So if we switch to screencast here, if we go ahead and look at the pads on the back side of the Talon, we can see that the pad that is furthest over here towards the right side is going to be uh, the Smart Audio Pad. So I'm just going to go ahead and solder that up real quick, just so that way I don't forget. But boy, these wires are going to be super long, but oh well, no big deal. So I'm going to solder up the Smart Audio one, so that way I have a reference of where to go next. And I know what side I'm working on. Alright, so that's done. So we're going Smart Audio, then we're going to the video signal, and then positive and negative. So let's go back to the bench here. The signal is going to be next. So that's going to be our yellow wire here. on the next pad and that goes really good and then the next one should be positive let me double check my diagram yep positive then negative and this is filtered output power cold joint reheat that okay and the last one is going to be negative and it's a little long I always strip my wires a little long so I'm going to chop some of that off. And 
boom, tack that in. So, let's look at my chart again one more time here. We've got smart audio, video signal, VTX positive and VTX negative, and smart audio, video, positive, negative. So, we have everything that we need there. So we can go ahead and get this baby fired up for a test. Plug in the Unify here. Make sure everything's good, nothing's touching each other and all that kind of good stuff. Do need to wrap some tape around that XSR at some point. Now this lead here is pretty short for flight camera so I'm just gonna have to do it like that and I need to find my battery there it is so I'm pretty confident that everything is where it needs to go so I guess the moment of truth is now or never Go ahead and plug this in and see what we get. No smoke. Caddx is running. VTX is running. Guess I better throw an antenna on there real quick. Don't worry because TBS products will last no matter what you do to them and I need goggles and I don't have my remote so I'm not going to be able to test smart audio I'm going to have to go upstairs and get that but I am getting my flight picture and according to the turtle it is recording so we can only hope so at this point so as you start to put things back together I always like to do like a periodic check and just make sure that everything powers up and all that kind of good stuff. So I just did that and everything is good. So now we can commence with putting on the rest of the side plate and everything. So I need to go ahead and put this in on that side so we'll squeeze that in right there I'm actually gonna unplug these video wires and loop them down around this standoff here or take that back I doesn't look like I have enough slack so we'll just twist them a little bit plug the camera back in all right the side the battery plate is in everything is good there we've got plenty of springiness here we don't have anything touching holding anything back I've got the wires for the turtle out of reach or view per se so let's take this other side of the mount here and how's the best way to approach this here it looks like we're gonna have to go ahead and screw the cameras in first So we're going to need a couple longer screws. And I guess we'll start with the bottom one. We'll just kind of put this into place here. And this has spacers built into it, so you don't have to worry about, you know, those little metal spacers for your 
cameras. But this part here is going to be tricky. Because normally you can just kind of get the screw started and get away with it. It looks like <clears throat> in this case it's not going to work. Looks like we're going to have to get everything kind of secured in there. And then go for it. So I'm going to slide in that battery plate a little bit. And then push in on the grommets. Get those into place. A little high back here. Okay. All right. Now, let's get our second camera screws in here on this side. All right, so this motor is totally in the way, so we're gonna have to take it off. Definitely learning on the fly here. It's all right. overcome a lot worse when it comes to quadcopters and RC after you do this for years so three screws pull the motor off to the side and let's get this uh, camera screw in properly Just gonna kind of get it started because everything's kind of a mess and lopper jawed here. I gotta remember to be careful not to lose my other parts that I'm not using, such as the little camera spacers, because. If I don't like the way this works, then I'm going to have to go back. So I don't want to be without those. Come on. All right. So we've got the flight camera started there. So now let's go ahead and cinch up the sides. And then we'll work on getting the kit, the flight camera set up. We'll have to come back through and tighten all this stuff up again too, because the bolts are kind of loose on the other side. So it doesn't look bad. As long as I can get everything kind of straightened out and stuff, things do look, some things look a little crooked, but that's the weird thing about the frame design here. When you look at the Acrobrat from the top, it's Thing, something that always looks out of alignment but it actually isn't so those are pretty tight one more screw back here in the back we added a few grams so I'm not really concerned about the weight basically because I know I'm going to be getting a heck of flight advantage but if you are concerned about the weight, there are things that you can do 
to reduce the weight of the Acrobrat. Um, things that come to mind are titanium screws, which you can buy titanium screw kits off of Amazon. They're probably not the best quality, but they are some kind of titanium or some kind of aluminum, but regardless, they're lighter. So you can do something like that. You can also shave weight by getting rid of a lot of this uh, TPU stuff that may or not be needed. Like, you know, this, this front bumper here, like, you know, this thing's pretty nice and it looks good, but honestly, it gets in my way a lot. Definitely was in my way today as I was installing this. So let's get this motor. I also printed off, I'll go put them on now because I just like the way the purple looks on this. But I printed off some lightweight version of these uh, landing feet. So there's a lot of things you can do shorter screws. them all down all right so camera angle one thing I need to do is move these cameras forward so I need to loosen this up. So the flight cam looks like it's definitely tilted more than the turtle. Let's see. Uh, it's really hard to, hard to say. I guess it really doesn't matter. You can always just fly it and see how it goes. why I was so dumb and put that motor back on. That was a bonehead move. Yeah, that's way too loose. Let me fix this. Be right back. All right, so all done. And as usual, you hear a lot of experienced quad builders say that they would rather build something from scratch than to modify or upgrade or change certain things on their copters. And that's true because you run into situations and have to problem solve like kind of on the fly. Like I had to break into my old Acrobrat extra parts that we had and pick up some like washers and stuff like that so we could get the right spacing on the flight cams so there's kind of what we're looking at with the flight cams and everything and sun's going down it's probably like the last half hour to 40 minutes of uh, golden hour so i'm gonna take this thing outside and fly it 
and see how everything goes and we'll uh, come back and uh, talk about it.